can you tell me the gradient of this tangent that touches the curve x squared at 2, 4? If you're not sure, stick around because we'll explore the history of this question and how the solution evolved out of a beautiful friendship. So this is an old question. Uh, philosophers in ancient Greece thought about tangents. Uh, Archimedes is an example. He was alive uh, from 287 before chickens to 212 before chickens, and he was a fan of tangents. He found uh, tangents to what we now call the Archimedean spiral. Uh, so if you look at the first turn of this spiral, he worked out that if you draw a tangent at any point on that first turn of the spiral, then you draw a circle through where the tangent touches the curve, uh, the normal to the radius of that circle will be equal to the arc of the circle. And this effectively gives you the gradient of that tangent. And, and basically anything else you want to know about that tangent. Uh, so he could find gradients of tangents to specific curves. But if you gave him a different curve, he would have to find a new method to do that. So what we want is a general method to find the gradient of a tangent to any curve, uh, which is something that the ancient Greek uh, thinkers didn't quite manage to do. In fact, we have to fast forward almost 2,000 years to get there. And it was thanks to these two scientists, Newton and Leibniz. Newton was English, Leibniz was German, and uh, they were best friends in high school, and they grew up to develop calculus together. Actually, I'm joking. Uh, their relationship was actually very hostile, and they accused each other of plagiarism, and they died uh, bitter enemies. Uh, so in fact, there was never any friendship between these two men. Uh, they were both accusing the other of stealing ideas. Uh, so, but anyway, they were credited jointly with developing calculus. And so let's have a look at how they eventually solved this problem of finding the gradient to a curve. So let's start with a curve. Let's call this any function f of x. And let's look at a point on that curve. Let's say, let's call that x, f of x. And we want the gradient of that tangent. Traditionally, we would say we can't find the gradient with just one point. We need two points to find the gradient. We want the rise over the run. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to draw another point on this curve and find the gradient of this line between those two points. The second point we're going to call x plus h and f of x plus h. So we've just added a little bit onto that x coordinate and correspondingly we use that as the input of the y coordinate. Okay, so if you want to remove that abstraction for a moment, let's say this first point was 1, 1, then this second point might be 2, 4 or something. So just the idea that we're adding a little bit on. So the point is just a bit further along on the curve. Okay. So let's have a look at the gradient of this line between the red point and the yellow point. So this gradient is going to be the rise over the run. That's y2 take y1. So f of x plus h take f of x over x2 take x1, x plus h take x. Simplifying, we get f of x plus h take f of x over h. Now let's have a look at an example so it makes a little bit more sense, hopefully. So let's suppose f of x was x squared. This is the expression of what we got for the gradient. And where we have these functions now, we're going to square the inputs. Because f of x is x squared, that f of x plus h now becomes x plus h squared, and f of x is x squared. Uh, so if we expand those brackets, we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared take x squared over h. Simplifying, we get 2xh plus h squared over h. Then we can divide by h and we get 2x plus h. Okay. So this is the, the expression for the gradient of that line between the red and the yellow points we're just looking at. Um, and now I'm going to ask a question, can we make h disappear? Because if we could make that plus h on the end disappear, we would have the gradient of the tangent. We just have to plug in the x coordinate and that would give us the gradient, right? So let's go back to our diagram. Uh, and remember, we just said that if f of x equals x squared, the gradient was 2x plus h. We want to make that plus h disappear. Well, suppose we move that yellow point closer to the red point. What's happening to h? Remember, h was just the little bit we added to x. So what's happening to h as we move those points closer together? It's decreasing. And also, what's happening to that line between the red and the yellow points? the gradient is approaching the gradient of the tangent. So as h is approaching 0, the gradient of the line is approaching the gradient of the tangent. Now, at this point, Archimedes might step in and say, hey, this is kind of like how I estimated pi. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you might want to look up how Archimedes uh, found uh, the circumference of a circle using 
uh, polygons because it's kind of similar to the process we're doing here. So this question can be phrased another way. You can say, what is the limit of the gradient as H approaches zero? So as we move this point closer to the red point, what is the limit of the gradient? That's where we think the gradient is going to end up at when H reaches zero. So as we just noticed, it's heading towards the gradient of that tangent. When that yellow point reaches the red point, uh, you know, I think it's safe to assume that that gradient will equal the gradient of the tangent. And in fact, this is exactly what Newton and Leibniz proved, uh, that as we look at the limit, as the difference between those points goes to zero, uh, we can assume the gradient will be equal to the gradient of the tangent. So let's go back to our working out before. We had the gradient equal to 2x plus h. Now we're going to introduce a little bit of new notation. So we're going to say the gradient of the tangent at x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero. So we're going to use this lim with an h pointing to a zero underneath it. This stands for the limit as h approaches zero. So we add this to each line of working out and now we can create this equality. So we can say this is actually equal to the gradient of the tangent at x. And now we get to this final expression and we ask, well, what is happening when h approaches zero? 2x plus h becomes 2x. So we look at that limit case. What is happening at that limit? And then instead of writing the gradient of the tangent at x, we introduce some new notation, f dash x. This was notation used by Leibniz. Um, so that is the notation we use to represent uh, the, the derivative, which is what we call this, the, the gradient of the tangent. I have seen some sources arguing that the ancient Greek philosophers would have had a problem with, with this equality, uh, saying that the tangent is equal to the limit. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Archimedes himself proved that infinite series converge, but there is an interesting history between how we do this mathematics today compared to uh, how the ancient Greeks would have thought about it. So what we're doing falls under the topic of calculus and looking for the gradient of the tangent is something called differentiation. Uh, so differentiation comes from the word to differentiate. Uh, so think about how we find the gradient by looking at the difference between points on a curve. So that comes from difference, differentiate, differentiation. And this function f dash x is also called the derivative. Okay, why though? Why do we care about finding the gradient of a curve? Apart from it being an interesting question on its own, uh, calculus is used in video games. Any physics engine running any game like Fortnite or Minecraft or Roblox will be using calculus to calculate, uh, you know, how things move around in that world. Rockets, we're using calculus to work out their trajectories and how they fly through the air and things like that. Uh, anything to do with space travel will need calculus to work out how to fire a rocket into space and how it's going to behave as it travels around Earth or the solar system. Uh, calculus is used in optimization, so you will learn more about this, but basically you can use calculus to make decisions about what is the most efficient way of doing something um, in order to maybe maximize profits in business and things like that. Economics, calculus is used engineering, of course, and in many other areas of life. Calculus is actually a very, very practical subject, uh, and we can look at more practical applications of calculus in the future. I hope you found this video helpful uh, as an introduction to finding the gradient of a tangent and calculus in general. Here's a little joke. Uh, so Archimedes, Newton, and Leibniz walk into a bar. The barman says, uh, How, what can I get you? Archimedes says, please pour me half a glass, then pour half of that again. Repeat the pouring in this way until you can serve me a full glass. Newton says, please pour me the limit of the infinite series, a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a six, and so on. And Leibniz says, please pour me the limit of the infinite series, a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth, and so on. Yeah, I, I don't know if that classifies as joke. Well... There you go. That was my attempt at a joke. Leave a like if you want. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.